You are listening to Win on KZKO. Check them out every Monday from 4 to 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Only on KZKO The Vibe. Covering all conversation from dating to getting revenge on your exes. This is Talking Points with Shabazz Davis on World Improv Network. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Talking Points. My name is Jerome Carmichael, filling in for Shabazz Davis this week, who's busy getting his beeswax shuffled. Good luck with that, Shabazz. <laughs> now, now, on tonight's episode of Talking Points, we're bringing back one of our most popular guests, and one of my personal favorite guests, Mr. Jack Bauer. Mr. Bauer? Hi. Welcome back to Talking Points. I never left. Oh. Well, oh. I'm just joking. I left. But oh, okay. It's, it's kind of a cliche, right? I yeah. never left. You know, I was always there. Um, yes. Well, and where you actually always are is right on the heels of injustice. Mm, chasing it down. Mm-hmm. Always. I always hear the footsteps. And sometimes they hear yours right before you snatch a terrorist and take him back to be, let's not mince words, tortured. Right. Or sometimes they'll just snap their neck right there on the spot to set an example for all the other ones. Yes, you are a, a man of no mercy. Uh, you are a, a man versed in death. all kinds of... To- yes, in death. Um if death wrote a book, I would be the editor. Oh. Which in well, some ways the editor has greater power than the author. Oh, uh, quite. And, uh, well, whenever you do edit that book, Jack, we'll have you back to talk about it. Here I, on Talking Points. I edit it on a daily basis with my hands around some terrorist's neck. Well. Or their scrotum. Yes, and those were, uh, yep. Yeah, the old rotted out pear with two seeds. That's right. Yeah, the uh, most sensitive, most uh, torture, uh, torturable part of the human body. Very sensitive region. Now, uh, you speak of... Kind of like Burma. Hmm. Sensitive region. Yes. Uh, also known as Myanmar, depending right. on the day of the week. Depending on, yeah, the mood. Yeah. You know, who's in charge, right? Yeah, which changes yeah. on a almost daily basis, it seems. But you, Mr. Bauer, you, you speak of choking the life out of a terrorist or mm. doing God knows what to their scrotum. But lately... You've moved on. You've changed methods. You've adopted a more humane method. Some would say. Some would say, yeah. I and would, I, I would, I, I include myself in that some. Oh. So, uh, now would you say that you're developing a heart, Mr. Bauer? Okay. You're not getting soft, are you? No. Okay. It's just a different tactic. And that tactic is that you're using gerbils. Right. Now, I think the first question is, Mr. Bauer, what are you doing with these gerbils? Well, first I give them to my my subject uh, to play with. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I give them to my subject when they're just little runs, little baby gerbils, mm-hmm. and then I make them raise them. I make them give them a name. I make them go to the online pet store and buy cute little out- outfits and I make them dress them up and I make them meet other gerbils and take them out on dates and have nice little gerbil dinners. And then those gerbils, you know, they get married and have little gerbil families. And, no, then, I, and but- then I tell that terrorist scumbag to kill that gerbil family that he just helped raise. Now, I think, uh, I think I speak for most of America when I say that I would be concerned on how effective this is when there is a time-sensitive 
when there's time-sensitive information that you need to retrieve. Well, that's why I chose gerbils, because their lifetimes are greatly condensed. I mean, if it was a dog, that would be, yeah, too much time. But gerbils, mm. uh, it's like just right. Well, and... Uh, gerbils only live for like a year. Yes, so so this could still take six months, for instance. Sure. For, okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, if, if I take them into the phase of like having dribble grandkids Mm -hmm. and then maybe you know like they have dribble grandkids who are like punk gerbils and you know they have a a, a clash Mm. of you know it's an age generational yeah yeah i've been there and uh yeah it's super relatable and uh that's what i want to get across to them Mm. you you want to speak to their human side that's right well, I would like to bring in uh, a, a Mr. Clive Goodwell. Uh, Clive, you are the uh, professional gerbil raiser, farmer, breeder. I'm not sure of the appropriate term. Um, but you are the uh, the man who contacted Mr. Bauer about the possibility of using gerbils. Yes. I, I can't tell you exactly my official title and where I raise these gerbils is classified. Mm. Oh, of course. Only of course. Uh, the CIA, Mr. Bauer, and a few others know exactly. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I contacted Mr. Bauer and said, you know, one day I said, he's just beating people up too bad. They don't care anymore. See, mm-hmm. people these days, they got tough skin. Mm-hmm. You can't torture them really like you used to be able to. They don't care about their life. But they do care once they see a little life grow within 28 days, because they have a gestation mm-hmm. period of only like three weeks. Mm-hmm. So they have the fastest ability to breed than any other animal, and therefore they grow up the face too. So when you see them staring in the face, licking their tails and flicking them around, it's tough. It's really tough to spin a gerbil by its tail until its tail snaps off and flies on the wall and kills a gerbil. Mm-hmm. Not many terrorists have that kind of heart. They might saw someone's head off. They might burn somebody alive. But, but they yeah, won't. They with will not. the cute gerbils, they're just too too beautiful. Adorable. Yeah, and you can see right here I brought two of my favorite. Oh. Here's Cletus. Oh, isn't he the cutest? And here's little Martha. Oh, and she's got this white collar of fur that's just so cute. Huh. Yes. So, so uh... So, Mr. Goodwell, you saw Mr. Bauer's methods, thought they were violent, and you thought, you know what, you'll catch more flies with honey. So you approached Mr. Bauer. I did. I did. And, Mr. Bauer, when you first heard this, what was your reaction? I was pissed. Yeah. I thought Mr. Goodwell was a terrorist. And Mr. Bauer, he's allergic to honey, so that was another reason why. No, no, Mr. Goodwill, this must have been a terrifying moment for you to have a pissed Jack Bauer directly in front of you. There's nowhere you can hide, except for in the den of gerbils, because not even Mr. Bauer come rolling through a den of gerbils with a firebomb to get to you. So that was your response, is to dive into a den of gerbils. I did. It was 6,714 gerbils, to be exact. And when Mr. Bauer knocked on the front door, he walked in, and he had a glow above him. He had a smile from ear to ear, and he couldn't do anything but be happy. Wow. Mr. Bauer, how have the gerbils changed you in your everyday life? Um, I like to think that they reminded me of who I was as a kid, you know? Uh, you know, I, I wasn't always Jack Bauer, terrorist killer. Mm-hmm. Um I was, I for a while, I was just Lil Jack. And yeah. I, and I remember, you know, being on the playgrounds and, you know, hearing the kids talk about their new family pet. And we couldn't have pets in my house because uh, my older sister had allergies. Oh. So I never got to share that story. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> so this was kind of a chance to, you know, relive that part of my childhood that I never got to experience in the first place. So Mr. Goodwill, he let you be a kid again. Yeah.
Yeah, and as you can, Jack can see as he's holding Martha over there, mm-hmm. he ain't allergic to him. He even took her home to his sister, and his sister didn't wheeze. There is nobody on this planet allergic to gerbils. Wow. Hence another reason why they the perfect way to try to get information mm-hmm. and to spread love. Well, but, my sister's in a coma. Yeah. Oh, but Did not you, from the gerbils. No. Gerbil exposure. No. Nah, she fell in a coma. He told me this in, in confidence, but I think that he's gotten over that point, so I might as well just disclose it to you, Mr. Carmichael. Mm-hmm. We went uh, over to the hospital, and he says, I got to show you something. Mm-hmm. And I said, what's that, Jack? I said, well, can you bring some of them gerbils with you? I said, of course I can. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much your family, too, now. I'm honestly surprised you ever go anywhere without some gerbils. I don't. I hardly go anywhere. The only time I go somewhere without gerbils, honestly is when I got to go to church. Mm. That's the only time I don't go with gerbils. Because mm-hmm. they don't like the pages of the Bible, the way it wrinkles. Yeah. It kind of scares them a little bit. Well, Bible is kind of misleading here, Scientologists. That's that's a good point, too. And so at the end of the day, we went to the to the hospital, and he showed me his sister and told me about the fact that she was in a coma. Nobody knew this. Mm. And I said, what happened, Jake? He said, well... I mistaken her when I was interrogating somebody and I had a bull oh. cloth over the top of her head. Oh thought it was the suspect and was actually my sister, and he beat her into a coma. Oh, my God. Ever since then, he never been the same, and that's why these gerbils have helped rehabilitate him and his tactics. Yeah, apparently it was... Uh, there was a bag over her head to <clears throat> conceal... Uh, it was her birthday. There's mm-hmm. gonna be a surprise birthday party, and uh, you know, everybody knows that I'm, I'm yeah her, her brother, and so they thought that would be kind of cute. And but this I, was just just a, instinct took over. Yeah, uh, an innocent prank that went awry. Yeah. Well, I will say, Mister Bauer, I sense a I sense a new calmness in you that I have not noticed before, and I. I wish you the best of luck in your future interrogations. Thank you. And, uh, Mr. Goodwill, uh, thank you for changing Mr. Bauer toward the better. I'll greatly appreciate that. And thank you for tuning in, America. This has been another episode of Talking Points, and that's the point. Give the Windcast your suggestions via Facebook, Twitter, or the KZKO Wind Blog during the commercial break of what issues the Wind Counselors can help you with during Good, Bad, Ugly, next on KZKO. You are listening to Win on KZKO. Check them out every Monday from 4 to 5 p.m. Mountain Time, only on KZKO.